Mankind is obviously monkeying around with something God has already created. And that should wake us up at least a little bit. I once was lost, oh, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Hey everybody, welcome to Built on Faith Homestead or Leaving Egypt, depending on the platform you're watching this on. Um, or I may even call it the frozen tundra that is Southern Missouri, uh, windswept, snowy tundras of Southern Missouri, right? It is cold. It is miserable outside. It is windy. That's why we're doing this video once again in a truck. My name is Justin. I live with my wife, Melissa. We have a little bitty tiny house that you can see behind my shoulder back there. We have three children. We do the best we can to serve the Lord and do the best we can to live a self-sustainable life as much as possible, understanding that we have a lot of growing to do in both of those areas. Today's video is is about edible doohickeys. <laughs> because I don't know how to say it um, on 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 YouTube without getting a community strike, and I have to be very, very careful. I'm going to talk very vaguely, and you may get mad at me, and I'm sorry, but I don't know how else to talk about it without getting another strike on YouTube. So today's video is about edible doohickeys, right? If you've not watched my mRNA lettuce video, you may not know what doohickeys are. Doohickeys are, um, whenever I whenever I mention mRNA doohickeys, I am talking about the newest and latest um, things that people may get to prevent them from getting ill. And um, whenever I mention um, other doohickeys, more traditional doohickeys, I will try to say traditional doohickeys. And so whenever I made this um, video on the mRNA lettuce, and I'll try to put this all in a playlist, um, all these videos in a playlist together, um, there were a lot of questions that come up. One of them being, will this be able to survive our intestine system and all of those things? Well, what I found is actually in some more research that I did, that that is one of the driving forces is if we can, uh, if scientists can make this, um, make plants be the delivery system, then it will be um, absorbed, absorbed through our intestinal system and actually be a very good way to absorb the both traditional doohickeys and the new novel doohickeys. And so I found that interesting. Another thing that kept coming up was I don't think people were saying, I don't think that it will be able uh, to do this because of the temperature issue, right? Having to keep the new novel doohickeys at a, such a low sub-zero temperature, um, there's no way that plants can be used then as a delivery system. However, that is actually one of the points is wanting to use the plants as a delivery system is that it doesn't then have to be kept at such a sub-zero temperature. And then, uh, as I read on through the different articles, one of the huge things that is wanting to be done is like, hey, not only can we possibly use plants as a delivery system, but then you could grow the plants in your own backyard and have your own stash, if you will, of edible doohickeys. You surely would not begin to connect dots, you tinfoil hat wearing, red bearded, crazy individual. You surely would not connect the dots between registering your garden and growing your own doohickeys. Surely you wouldn't begin to connect those dots, right? And so I found this interesting. And uh, as I did more study, I learned that this was something that's been trying to be developed at least since 1989, where um, they have tried to use plants to deliver more traditional doohickeys, whether it be um, lettuce or spinach or even rice and potatoes and bananas, which I found rather crazy to me, rather a crazy thought to think about. And as I studied it some more, I really, and then as I was feeding our animals today and, and doing some work around the place, I really got to thinking about the wild edible videos that we have done. Look under our playlist, wild edibles, right? Um, they're widely unpopular. <laughs> they're not very popular videos, which is okay. Um, we are really doing these videos to raise awareness, to educate, to help people along with their walk with the Lord, and hopefully, hopefully, prayerfully, um, show the light of Christ working through us to the best um, that we possibly can so that people will seek the Heavenly Father, right? And so as we 
uh, made those videos, we talked a lot about the medicinal properties of the wild edibles that grow in our local region. And wild edibles, I understand, are very local, right? You need to know what grows in your local region, right? Um, something that grows in Florida is probably not going to grow in mid-Missouri, and something that grows in mid to southern Missouri is probably not going to grow in Alaska. Something that grows in California may not grow in New York, and I understand all of that, right? But I would encourage you to spend some time to study out the wild edibles that grow all around you because there are fantastic, fantastic, delicious, tasty wild edibles probably growing all around you um, or within a reasonable amount of a drive away from you. And those wild edibles will contain all kinds of medicinal properties as well. When me and my wife first started to learn it, really it was about money and trying to substitute our grocery bill. And then as we began to learn it, we divided it up into two major groups, wild greens and mushrooms. My wife started learning the wild greens. I started trying to learn the mushrooms. And um, I'm not talking about mushrooms that'll make you see Willie Nelson. I'm just talking about regular old mushrooms, different ones, right? Chantrails and morels and um, dryad saddles and and all the different. Um, oh, my memory's slipping right now on um, the the ones that on the bottom they're almost like a velvety feeling um, that grow here in Missouri. Uh, but there are there are all kinds of mushrooms, right? That grow and some of them are very good for you. I'll even show you one here that is supposed to have antiviral effects. Um, so we divided and conquered, right? But then as we learned about all these wild edibles, both mushrooms and greens that grow all around us, and we begin to be able to substitute our grocery bill, we also learned of all the medicinal properties. And so we begin to make some salves and those kinds of things from things like goldenrod and plantain and even dandelion and those kinds of things, um, to help with, um, some of the different medical issues that we have had. And, and plantain herb can even be used like a like a neosporin, if you will, and it's anti-inflammatory and antifungal and all kinds of stuff, right? It's fantastic for you. And so I would encourage you to spend some time to learn about the wild edibles that grow in your area and the medicinal properties that are included in them because it seems as though mankind has noticed, hey, there are medicinal properties in medicine or in food. So now let's try to hijack that, right? And put our own man-made medicinal properties into them. And I don't think we can outdo God as mankind. I really don't. And so I think that God does it better. I really do. I think God does a better job. And so that being said, I think it would probably be wise for each and every one of us to quit spending as much time on YouTube and or as much time watching TV, or as much time just in entertainment, and use that time, some of it, okay? I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm not saying it's bad to use some of this to, you know, as a catalyst to get you out to working and learning and all those things. I'm not even saying it's bad every once in a while just to take a break, right, and watch something funny, right? Um, watch, a, watch a dog chasing its tail. It's funny, right? I get it. <laughs> But what if you use that time, rather instead of instead of just being entertained, what if you use that time to educate yourself? What if you use that time to pull your head up out of the sand and, and actually see the world around you? What if you used that time to open your eyes to the world around you and begin to learn the things that God has placed all around you that can help you through this life, right? Um, what if you begin to know the world for what it truly is? That would be a crazy thought process, wouldn't it? I would encourage you. I would, I would even encourage, listen, I don't know how many creators you're going to hear say this, but I would encourage you, get off of our channel, get off of Built on Faith Homestead and get to work. Although I will say we're going to do the best we can to try to show you some of these things, at least what is around here in mid-Missouri. We will we will do our best to try to show you some of this stuff and educate um, and what have you. But really at the end of the day, you're going to have to get out and learn it yourself. You're going to have to get out and put in the work, right? And so I would encourage you to do that because mankind is obviously monkeying around was something God has already created. And that should wake us up at least a little bit. We appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next video.